In this video, we're going to talk about integration by parts. And we're going to see where integration by parts comes from and how it applies to quantum mechanics. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. So integration by parts is a very useful technique when we're doing integrals. And integrals come up all over the place in quantum mechanics. And a lot of these integrals have the product of functions inside them. And so integration by parts is the toolkit that we need to uh, kind of take apart these integrals and turn them into something that is more easy to work with. So let's go ahead and start off with the product rule for differentiation, because this is where integration by parts actually comes from. So if we write down the product rule for a differentiation, uh, that's going to be uh, describing uh, when you have the product of functions, f and g, and you want to take their derivative with respect to x, and remember f and g are functions of x, this guy is actually going to be equal to two terms. It's the sum of two terms. We're going to have a term that involves f times the derivative of g, and then we're going to have a term that involves the derivative of f times g. So see what I've done over here? Uh, in this first term, I've differentiated g, and I've left f unchanged, and then I've added to that uh, the differentiated version of f, and I've left g unchanged. So we've just swapped the derivative in these two terms. And this idea of swapping derivatives is going to become very useful in a second. So you might see that I've written this out very spaced out. It's in a very spaced out manner. So why have I done this? Well, I actually want to do something to this uh, product rule and turn it into something that involves integrals. So if we integrate with respect to x on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, we're going to get something that's a little bit closer to integration by parts. So let's go ahead and integrate this side. If we integrate this with respect to x, and if we integrate this term with respect to x, and we integrate this term with respect to x, this is what we get. What does the left-hand side turn into? Well, this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, differentiation and integration are actually opposites of each other. So if we integrate the derivative, we're just going to get f times g back. So the left-hand side is going to be f times g. All of this is just going to turn into the product of the two functions. Now, what we can actually do is we can uh, move some stuff onto the other side. If we write the equation in terms of this and move this guy to the other side, what we're actually going to get is the integral of this mess inside, f times the derivative of g with respect to x, and this integral is with respect to x. This guy on the left-hand side, if we put this guy on the left-hand side, and we move this guy to the other side, what we're actually going to get is this guy is going to be equal to the product of the two functions, f and g, minus the integral of df dx times g dx. So this guy over here is very similar to this term, but it has a minus sign and the derivatives are swapped over. So we've swapped a derivative, but in order to swap the derivative, we've had to introduce a minus sign and we've had to introduce this term over here, which is the product of the functions. Now, what if we are not just doing indefinite integrals, but what if we have boundary conditions? What if, what if we have uh, boundaries which we're evaluating from and to. Well, if we have definite integrals, then what we can do is we can put these uh, boundaries over here. So these are the bounds of integrations. And we can evaluate all these guys from A to B. And A and B, they're just placeholders for some bounds of integration. So we're starting at A and then finishing at B. This over here is actually what we're going to be using in quantum mechanics. And A and B are often going to be minus infinity and plus infinity. So if we, if we let A go towards minus infinity, and if we let B go towards plus infinity, then this is going to go over the entire domain of a wave function. And what that's going to allow us to do is it's actually going to allow us to eliminate this boundary term. And this boundary term is actually going to go to 0 at plus infinity and minus infinity. Why would it go to 0? 
Well, it's because of the normalization condition that we talked about in the previous videos. The normalization condition means that functions that are normalizable are going to have uh, behavior like this. I'll, I'll draw a little diagram. If we have the x-axis over here, and this over here is uh, psi, or we can think of it as the probability density, if we take its amplitude and square it, uh, all of the normalizable solutions are going to kiss the x-axis really far away from the origin. So over here, uh, as we go to infinity, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, as x goes to uh, this guy, is going to go to 0, as x goes to plus or minus infinity. So that's going to allow us to eliminate the boundary terms. So that's what this little diagram is showing over here. All of the action is happening here near the origin. Over here, what we're having is asymptotic approach. So the function is asymptotically approaching the x-axis. We can think of it as it's trying to kiss the x-axis. And sometimes what you can actually have is it can be 0 outside a given domain. You can have a finite domain and have the function equal to 0 everywhere outside the domain. But it's also possible to have asymptotic approach. So this is the kind of situation that we're looking for. And if we're taking the integral from minus infinity to infinity, we're trying to find the area under this curve. And this area under this curve has to equal 1 if it's normalized. So if we have the product of functions and our boundary terms are going to 0, then integration by parts tells us that this left-hand side over here is just equal to this right-hand side term over here with a minus sign. So what is integration by parts telling us? If we can set the boundary terms equal to 0, and they disappear at the boundaries, then what we can just say is that swapping the derivative inside the integral is just going to give us a minus sign out the front. And this is a fact that we're going to keep using again and again in quantum mechanics in all the derivations in the subsequent videos. So remember this. And you, once you start applying it to several derivations, you're actually going to be doing this in your head very quickly. All you do is you identify two functions, and you swap the derivative. You move the derivative from one function to the other, and when you, have, when you do that, you have to introduce a negative sign. There has to be a minus over here to compensate for the fact that you swap. And all of this over here is coming from the product rule of differentiation. So in this video, we started with the product rule of differentiation. We uh, used calculus and a bit of algebra, and we got this expression over here. Then what we did is we chose bounds for integration. We chose a and b to be the bounds of integration. And uh, we looked at some physical examples or some actual examples in quantum mechanics where the boundary term, this product of the functions evaluated from uh, b to a or from a to b, depending on which one is negative, this term we've, we've identified is going to go to 0 if it's a normalizable wave function. And we're going to have more complicated uh, kind of relationships over here. And these complicated relationships are going to be simplified just by moving the derivative over to the other function and introducing a negative sign. So make sure you watch the next few videos where we actually use uh, this fact of integration. You can find the link to the playlist if you click over here.